Hello and welcome to this part of the Gatling step by step master class. So in our earlier parts we have done all these topics and we have done until we did API testing in the last session we also did uh, we looked at parameterization using feeders. So today we will start with correlation and I will go from the basics I will start from scratch and we will go up step by step so do not worry if you are a complete beginner we will start from scratch and we will go up step by step so we will first understand what is correlation why is it required how to use regular expression in doing correlation you can also use a JSON path or based on the response that you are dealing with and from where you want to extract a value we can use different options and then we will see an example and demo how can we use correlation in a Gatling script? So correlation is a process by which we extract some value from the response of a step and then store it in a variable and then use it in some other request. So this is all done at runtime dynamically therefore it is also called as dynamic referencing. So these are the two basic steps in correlation. We extract the value dynamically at runtime from the response of a particular step or a request and then we store that value in a variable and then refer that value through that variable in any subsequent step and why is it required so generally if you see in our tests we have to follow a session or sometimes we have to uh, use some value which is generated dynamically or some value which is uh, we do not we cannot uh, determine what that value will be beforehand we cannot hard code it in our script so let's take this example in this test we have all these steps we have a login step then going to the home page and then doing logout now when we do a login generally we get some token ID or we get a get a token or a session ID and we have to use the same token ID or the same session ID in all the subsequent requests to maintain that particular user login session so therefore after login with valid credentials we will get a session ID in the response that we will have to extract and store and then use it in all the other subsequent requests so this is a one one very simple example where correlation will help now let us see an example for Gatling so I'm going here and I will open my browser and let us go to the Gatling computer database application and for getting the HAR I will go to the I will go to more tools and developer tools and here we have got the network tab here and then here preserve log is on and recording is also on and make sure that you do not have any earlier logs so you can clear all the earlier logs okay now to record going to this page I will refresh and reload the page now let us say I click on add new computer I will give some name here give the introduce date discontinue date we can select some company here and create the computer now I will search the computer now because this is a demo website the computer is not exactly getting created in the backend and therefore we cannot find it here in the list but just for now let us say I will search any existing computer and filter and it has come here I will click here so it goes to that computers page and I will delete the computer and that's it I will stop the recording and then I will right click on the logs here and save all as HER with content and I will you can use any name the extension should be dot HER so I will save it in my downloads folder you can save it anywhere and now to convert it into a Gatling script we need to open our Gatling recorder so you can use your Gatling recorder from the standalone Gatling or from your project so I am going to open my Gatling recorder from the project
okay so this we are doing so that we get a sample script and then we can try doing correlation there so getting recorder is here I will first change the recorder mode to HR converter and browse the HR file and say open so it will go to the package computer database which is fine and I will say this is recorded simulation or I can say create and create search and delete computer and this will go in scalar format all this is all this I'm keeping as default I will just say no static resources here and click on start and this is done if I now go back to my project and check my scalar folder and under computer database package I have got my script here create search delete computer I will stop the recorder and here this is our script so let me expand this window so we have got our script generated let us first clean up the script and tidy up it a little bit and for that uh, I can remove all these header maps we don't need them and I'm also going to remove the references of these headers wherever we have used them in the scenario so I will delete it from here and here here I can just this I can delete the entire line I will press ctrl x on my keyboard and then here also I will delete this while you are doing this make sure you don't get any errors so that means you don't delete any extra things only this particular reference of header maps okay this is done let us also give some meaningful names to our requests so this is the first request which is going to the home page so I will say this is uh, load home page then this is going to new computers page so I, I will say new computers or new computer page then here we are creating the computer with all these data so this is a post request so I will say create computer you can also have spaces whatever name you give here will show up in the report and then after this we are searching the computer so this is search computer then we are after we get the search results we are selecting the computer or getting the computer so I will say this is select computer and then finally we are deleting the computer this is delete computer alright so we have got our script ready and let us first very quickly run it and check if everything is working fine so I will save the script and then run the engine class and then we will quickly check if everything is fine and then we will do correlation here so here this is my script at index number 2 so I will select 2 give some description and start it also in our script if there are any pauses it will take all those pauses as well so generally you should uh, decrease the pause time so this is fine for now because we are running with a single user 
so it is it has done load home page new computer page create computer then it will do search and select the computer and then delete and yes everything is done everything looks okay I can also open and check the report so everything looks fine here everything is okay so now let me go back to the script and let us also first uh, decrease the pause times so here it is 14 seconds I will make it 4 seconds here it is 18 I'll make it let us say 3 seconds here uh, all this is fine okay so this is now fine now let us assume and let us take an example so here in this request we are searching the computer so this is what we are using to search the computer which is fine after this we get a list of computer and we are selecting the first computer from there so if you see here here we are searching the computer and then this is the first computer that we are getting and we are selecting it from here and at this moment at this time this goes to this particular computer with ID 381 so this is the ID of the computer okay however we do not know that where it will be in the list so we cannot uh, hard code it here we, ca we cannot even predict the ID this is an example uh, so in real world it can be some other uh, you know scenario but we are assuming that we cannot predict this computers 381 or 381 the ID of the computer this will be generated at runtime because we are assuming that we will be creating a computer here and then we will be searching the same computer because we are creating a computer in the same session we cannot predict what is going to be the computer ID okay so for that we have to either from this request from the response of this particular request we have to extract a value like this which has computers and then some digits some three digits the first instance of such a uh, value so we have to extract from the response of this request and then store it in a variable and then refer it in the subsequent requests which is here and also in delete computer here okay so this is what we have to do so for that what I can do is if I check the response so let me go back and if I so you can see my network uh, developer tools and network tab is already here and I will just clear all the logs so when I go here and type ace and say filter by name so this is not recording I will switch on the recording and let me go back and I will type ace and filter so if I see here this is where this is my request where I am typing this and searching and if I click here and go to the response tab so this is the response that is I am getting out of for this request this is the response I am getting and this is in HTML, HTML or you can say XML format or HTML format yes this is HTML and for this for extracting a value from this content from this response I can use regular expression now the function or the option you will use to extract the response will depend on the format or the type of the response in case it is a JSON response you can use a JSON uh, path or JSON extractor if it is XML you can use some XML path or XPath or XML extractor uh, we have already seen in the earlier session of API testing that we can use a JSON path as well so I can say here dot check and then in case I want to check and extract something from a JSON response I will say JSON path and you can see here it is we have already seen this in the API testing session but this is a HTML so I will say regex and we have got this regex function 
so I will give the regular expression here whatever regular expression I create for extracting that value I will give it here and then I can say dot exists so that will confirm that this particular regular expression exists that, that, that means that using this regular expression whatever regular expression we will give here using that we are able to extract some value and then I will say dot save as and give some variable so let us say I will say computer ID you can give any variable name here okay so we are saying we are adding a check block and in the check we are so check will work on the response and then we are using a regex function we will give a regular expression here and we'll check if it is able to extract some values get some values and whatever value it will extract will get saved in this variable computer id and this is what we will refer in the subsequent requests so now our main task here is to find or get a regular expression that will match this particular value okay so let us see what we can do I am going to first you can copy this response okay and you can just search for if you search for regex generator online you can get a lot of options lot of tools so we have this regex generator here then we have reg exer then regex 101 so there are so many options here regex ai is here so you can see here in this particular regex generator you can put your entire text here so i can put my entire html response here and then at the bottom here you can see whatever you want to extract you can select that particular part so here you can see there is a lot of things here i will have to find where exactly i am getting that computers 381 so you will have to do a little search here so you can see wherever we are getting that computers 381 and you can select that and it will generate a regex for it okay so let's say if I select this whatever I select it will generate regular expression and then we can use it so I think a better option will be uh, let us go to this regex dot AI it uses AI to generate the regular expression you can put your text here in this box okay and then you can just select the part for which you want to generate regular expression so I will select this part and as I do it you can see as I do it it has come up here I will remove these earlier things by clicking on them so this is what I need highlighted text is computers 381 and then I will click on run so it will generate the regex for us so you can see here it has generated three regular expressions so here it is these are the regular expressions it has created and just in case you want to learn what are these characters how it is how these will work what are all this you can go to you can either go to any of these uh, regex sites or if you go to my website automation step by step dot com here if you go to the stories section I had written a story some time ago on regex if you search for regex yes here it is a story on, of regex so you can understand what is regex in a very simple conversation between Mickey and Minnie and here you can see all this if when we say backslash lowercase t it is to match any digit this is to match any non digit then this is to match alphanumeric characters this will match non alphanumeric characters then this is this will match characters lowercase a to z this will match characters uppercase a to z and so on so using a combination of characters and uh, keys like this we can create regular expressions
okay and also there is another very good website i think this is regex1 that you can check for learning regular expressions so here you can see it will show you all the options these keys and what does they mean these characters and then you can also type here and you can learn step by step about regular expressions so here uh, we have come we are using this one regex.ai you can also use any um, you know AI tools we have so many AI chat tools they can also help you like chat GPT is there Bard is there Gemini is there you can check them so here uh, let me take this particular uh, regular expression I am copying this and before putting this in my code I will also check on some other websites so this is regexr.com here I will paste my content that is HTML body and I will let us say copy this regex and put it here and let us check it says six matches yes it says six matches and if I check what all it is matching so you can see yes it is matching this one computers 381 and all these kind of things it will match computers 330 and all this it will match similarly you can check here also this is my regular expression and I will paste my content here so you will have to check this so I think this is working here so it should work I will use this use this particular regex so let us go to our code now now this is where we have to give our regular expression now if you directly give your regex like this here you can see it is not properly taking all the format things uh, this backslash we have to escape and all those things we have to do here so to avoid this you can give three double quotes and then give your regular expression okay so you can see now you don't have to do any kind of formatting or escape any characters so within three double quotes you can give the regular expression and we are now saving it in this variable and now to refer this variable you can use the syntax so let's say I have to refer it here so here I will remove this hard-coded value and then I will say uh, you can say dollar and then within curly brackets you can give the variable name I believe in the latest versions hash should also work hash should work here so I can say hash and within curly brackets the variable name and similarly here also I have to refer it I will use it here as well okay so you can see this is how I'm using it and also to verify uh, this in the report I can refer this in the request name as well so I'm also referring this in the request name here so that I will this will be displayed in the report and I can verify this has referred the value correctly so this is correlation we are extracting a value from the response of this particular step storing it in a variable and then using that variable in subsequent requests so you can now save and run and let us see so this is our simulation at id 2 and I will run it so this has started so as of now it has gone to new computers page and now it is doing create computer and now so if we see here
okay so here I think there is some error this particular regular expression did not find found anything so therefore when we said exists it did not find anything so here also if I check the report we have an error here so it did not found anything so we will have to see our regular expression I believe this is not working fine let us check this I will go back to the script I can uh, go back here and maybe I will try to see if we have got some other regular expressions so let me see this one this should work so this you will have to check which regular expression is working for you I'll just copy this paste it here alright this is what I'm using now this one so when once you get it from here you can also check on some other uh, online tools if this is a correct regular expression so this looks fine to me I will save and run again and I'm running the engine class now so this is number two and I will run the simulation so it has done load home page new computers page then create computer is running fine and yes looks like now it should be fine also I can see here in the request names also it is appending this computers 381 that means this is working fine and we have got our report here and if I check you can see in the report everything is okay this is the the request names are also fine where we have appended and referred that particular variable okay so we are able to do correlation and as I said this part where we are extracting value from the response this will be based on the format of the response if it is HTML or any other you can use regex uh, you can use regular expression in general as well in all the responses however if you have got something like a JSON response then a JSON path will be much more easier and uh, relevant there so similarly you can see what is your response format and accordingly you can extract and do correlation like this okay fine so next we have command line now here if we have our maven project like we have we have been working with the maven project in that case there are some maven commands that we can use to directly run our gatling tests and some other things as well for example you can see you can run all this gatling help gatling verify to open the recorder we have gatling colon recorder to run a test gatling colon test to run a specific simulation we can say gatling colon test and say hyphen d gatling dot simulation class and give the that particular simulation so let us see this so if you go to your project and you can go to your command line and go to the project folder or if you are using a IDE like IntelliJ we have option to use the inbuilt terminal so if you go to uh, your in my case I'm using IntelliJ so if I go to file menu and go to here I will go to view tool windows here we have an option called terminal you can also press alt F12 for getting this and it opens the terminal here and here you will see it opens the terminal on the same folder that is our project folder okay so you can see this is our project it is opening it here in case you want to use any external command line or terminal make sure that you go to your project folder okay now 
here the first thing I will check is MVN space hyphen version to check MVN is there on the system. We have already seen this in the earlier session how to get M M Maven. Okay. Now I will say MVN. So we have MVN Gatling help. You can use clean or without clean also it will work. So I will say MVN Gatling and colon help. So let us see if this runs this command. And yes, you can see it shows us all the options we can use with this Gatling command. So we have Gatling help, Gatling recorder, Gatling test, Gatling verify. If I say, uh, let us say Gatling verify, you can also clear the terminal. I will say MVN Gatling verify. So let's see what response this will give. Yes, it says everything is okay. Then I will say, uh, let us say MVN Gatling. I will say MVN Gatling recorder and run it. So this should open the Gatling recorder from our project. So this is running fine. And yes, you can see the Gatling recorder is here. I will close it for now. Uh, then let us see if it can run our test. I will say MVN Gatling test so let me clear this and I will say MVN Gatling colon test so here it is running and let us see the response it gives us all right so this is getting some libraries Okay, let's wait for it to complete the process and we have got an error it says more than one simulation to run either specify one with this particular flag Gatling simulation class or enable run multiple simulations so this happens if you have more than one simulation in your project in that case you will have to either give what simulation you have to run or you can give this particular section or enable run multiple simulation in your pom.xml file so we will see both the options so here let us say I will go and ch go back to the earlier command I can press up arrow to just go to the earlier commands and then I will copy this and give it here this flag so we have to give the simulation class here for that I will go back to my project and let us say I have to run uh, this particular simulation demo test one I will do a right click here and say copy path reference and you will have to get it get the path we will have to get this package name and the class name so this is what we need so this is computer database is the package and this is the class so I will copy this and paste it here now here we have to make sure that uh, we should not have dot scala at the end and then this forward slash I will replace with a dot and this whole thing I will put within co double quotes so starting from after minus D all the data you will put under double quotes and I will now I will expand the window double click and expand so let us see if it is able to run our simulation now it has already added the required libraries in the earlier run so it should be faster this time and yes you can see it has started the simulation here and it is running the simulation so you can use this option the other option is you can go to your pom.xml file and here you can go to pom.xml file and under the configurations section you can add this run multiple simulation make it true and then we can inform 
what simulations or what tests or what packages to include and what to exclude. So here, if I see my form.xml, if you scroll down, there is a, you will find a section for configuration here. You can see it is here. So between this, we will add our run multiple simulation section. Also, you can search for Gatling run multiple simulations. This should take you to the Gatling. Uh, no, I have to go to the Gatling official website. Yes, it should be here. And here you can check. If I see how to run multiple simulations. Yes, so here you have, you can see all the options are here. And then we should see here how do we use how do, can we run multiple simulations let me just search run multiple yes it is here so you can see this is the section and you can if you want you can just copy it from here and add in your pom.xml file and here you have to uh, give the package names you can also use wild characters like this so if you have packages like my dot package and some names so all those packages will get included and similarly you can also exclude what you don't want to run so when you do this after doing this when you run the command mvn gatling test it will work as per whatever setup you have given in your pom.xml file okay so this is how you can use command line or commands to run your gatling tests and do all these things with the commands okay now next we have assertions now we have seen some checks until now in our requests we can add some checks however those checks are for that particular request or the response of that particular request we can add assertions for the entire performance test and you can add assertions based on your performance metrics so assertions allows us to set the expectations like the response time number of failed requests percentiles etc and we define the assertions in the setup block okay so let us see how do we add these assertions we will take any of our existing gatling script so let me say let me go to this demo test one and let me see what we are doing here yes so here we are uh, using our computer database application we are editing a computer and you can see this is our user load uh, let us see if we added some different user load somewhere yes if i go to this recorded simulation one that we created in one of our earlier lectures here also you can see we have got search computer create computer all this is from our computer database demo application delete computer is here then we are also having different scenarios and different user roles so this we all learned when we learned how can we isolate the processes and how can we use different uh, setup of virtual users and here we are doing all these things now let us try to add some assertions in this script so in the setup block you can add at the end you can say dot assertions and add all these assertions like this so i will say after this i will say dot assertions and then within the brackets of assertions i can add multiple assertions so i'll just say now we have assertions at different levels we can have global and then also for different levels which i will show you in a moment for now i am just copying these two assertions where we are setting we are saying check the global response time the max global response time should be less than 500 milliseconds so this is in milliseconds let me give it some lower value so that we can see if it fails how it will show in the report also we have this global dot successful request percentage is greater than 95 now let me show you uh, if I manually type this I will say global I am getting all the auto suggestions I will say response time I am getting auto suggestion here as well I will say dot max and here also then I will say LT LT means less than 
gt means greater than lte means less than equals gte means greater than equals so i can say this and then i can add the threshold value so this you will get auto suggestions as well in case you want to type manually okay then you can see uh, we have all these suggestions global response time max global request per second so here we are checking at least 50 request per seconds will be should be there here we are checking at least 95 percent of successful request should be there here we are checking global field request should be less than 10 we can also have percentage here then here we are checking the 99th percentile response time should be less than 200 milliseconds here we are checking for request for this particular request so this is at a request level we have to give the request name here and we are checking for this particular request the failure should be less than five percent okay so these are the different scopes when we say global this is at a global level that means it uses the metrics from the entire performance test when we say for for, for all here it uses the calculated statistics for each and individual request that means if i say for all here if i add some assertion using for all and then i add the assertion whatever assertion i add here this particular assertion will work for all the requests individually however when we say global this works for the entire performance test metrics okay and then as we have seen we can say details and then we can give some particular request name and that will work for that particular request okay so you can see here we are setting global then for all then here we are set setting for details so similarly we can set all this uh, let me also add some of these just to check just to have some uh, different types of assertions I'm, I will keep on adding it and based on your requirements you can add all these different assertions okay and now I will try to run and check this is save the script and run the engine class and this is recorded simulation 1 so I will select this recorded simulation 1 which is at index number four and let's run this so this time in the report we should also see the assertions this is running now so it is running all the different requests and we have lots of virtual users here and this is done and you can see here also we are getting information about the assertions what is what has passed what has failed and then I can go and check in the report so here you can see looks like everything has passed here global max response time is less than 100 so you can see everything is okay here and everything is passed so everything is in green if every anything fails you should see it in red so let me check uh, if I decrease the value of the response time the max response time I can say here it should be less than 50 I believe some requests should fail this time the session should fail for some of the requests and I will run the save and run the engine class and I will select recorded simulation 4 so this is at index number 4 this is what I have selected and I have started the run now this can be these sessions can be very handy this is a very very powerful way to uh, you know check our performance test and make sure that it runs as per the performance we want so we can add all the assertions as per our requirement of the performance test and then okay this is this has also passed because you can see 
we are checking 50 and actually is 41 this has also passed this has also passed so failed events are zero uh, 99th percent response time we are seeing less than 200 it is 24 then here we are seeing 50 it is 41 so this has also passed so let me change this to a really lower value and this also so I will say this to let us say 20 and this also I will change I'm just trying to see some failed assertions and how it will look in the report so that I can show you that you can also try at your own and you can see how it runs and what it looks like and in the document I will also keep a chart for all the possible assertions you can see all those assertions we can have in Gatling and you can try them based on your, the requirement of your performance test you can try those assertions yeah I think this time this one failed uh, this also failed I think all of these failed uh, let me check in the report and yes in the report you can see this is now R these are now failing okay so which is okay and this is how you can use assertions and yes this is the chart for assertions and here you can see all the possible assertions so this is for global response time all these assertions then the HTTP status code assertions are here so we can verify status code so this is a uh, this is check that we can put for individual requests the checks we have already seen okay in the earlier sessions then we can have body content sessions this also comes in checks and then header sessions can also come in check and then other sessions you can see measure the duration of a code block then we can say extract value for the response and save it for later use uh, this is what we have seen in correlation so this also comes under the check block okay so this is how we can use assertions okay now uh, for the section for getting with VC uh, with a version control tool like git and using Gatling with a CI tool like Jenkins I had already created videos on this in my uh, earlier Gatling playlist where I have individual lectures so you can go on my channel or my website when you go to this website automation step by step dot com under the performance testing section you can find Gatling here and if you go to this Gatling lectures you will see a lecture on git here so this is how to use Gatling with version control tool git and then this is for Jenkins and there's also a lecture on Gatling along with Jenkins and git integration so what we are doing here is we can store our project on a repository like github and then using Jenkins we can get the project and then run it with Gatling so that means we are not dependent on our local system we will put our project on on a repository and it can be cloned from anywhere so we can uh, put our Jenkins on any machine any server machine any remote machine and in the Jenkins configuration we will have a feature we will have a section where it will pull the project from git from github or whatever repository using git and then we will have commands to run the project and then we can use it like that so just in case you are interested you can watch these sessions so this is for git then this is for Jenkins and this is for Jenkins plus git all right okay now next we have Gatling Enterprise so Gatling Enterprise is the commercial version of Gatling so here we will see what is Gatling Enterprise how can we set up Gatling Enterprise account on cloud uh, and we will explore the Gatling Enterprise web UI and we will also see how can we upload our simulations on Gatling Enterprise and use it there and use all the features of Gatling Enterprise now 
uh, this is something extra from what we are already doing we can create our entire performance testing project and do all the performance testing with the Gatling open source however Gatling Enterprise gives us some extra features it gives us a, 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 a web UI where you can you know look at all your statistics all your runs it maintains the history you can check all the reports there you can also create your projects and team you can add your teammates there and the entire team can work there we can see all the history etc so we will see that in a moment so Gatling Enterprise was earlier called as Gatling Frontline and it is the management interface for Gatling so you can manage your tests you can run your test you can view the reports you can see all the analytics you can see all the history compare runs or reports everything you can see from there and track all your projects and metrics okay we can also integrate with the CI CD pipeline now Gatling Enterprise has two versions on premise where you install all the hardware yourself on your premise and then set up Gatling Enterprise there so there then you will be responsible for all the hardware configurations resources etc and some organizations do this uh, mostly for security purposes they don't want to put any of their data on online or you know any public repository so we can use this and the other option which is very straightforward is the cloud version where we just create a c account on Gatling Enterprise and then start using it here the entire infrastructure and all the hardware is there on the Gatling servers so we will see this option here are the steps step number one is go to cloud.gatling.io and create an account so I will go here cloud dot gatling dot io and here you can create an account from here you can also sign in with Google or github I have an account so I will very quickly try to log into my account so you can create an account first and then log into your account okay and you can see here this is my account now here you can see some earlier simulations but in your case you will not see this here you can directly go to the organization and in case when you log in for the first time mostly by default it may uh, it will ask you to create an organization so you can create an organization you can just give an organization name and create it and then we have users here so once you create an organization you can add users so by default your user is already here which is an admin and you can also edit the roles from here I can invite more users from here so I can give the email address I can select the organization role for the user viewer tester test admin system admin and then select the team and then choose the role and then send the invitation okay then here you can see the invitations that you have sent you will see all the invitations as of now there are no pending invitations then here we have teams you can create a new team one default team is already here but we can create new teams as well and then here you will see some billing information about your account and if you have any notifications you can check here so once we create an organization then we have API tokens section here so here we can create some API tokens and these are mostly use, used to connect your Gatling enterprise account with any external account it can be your Gatling open source or maybe some other uh, processes applications like some CI CD tool so wherever you want to connect your account we generally do it using API tokens we can create tokens from here and here also we can select the role so this token will be able to do only read start simulation read permissions or do some configuration all that you can set and create tokens then here we have packages so I will tell you about packages what are these so generally from our Gatling open source we can package our project in a jar file and upload it here and then it will be available in the Gatling enterprise then we have simulations here we can create simulations and can also see the earlier simulations their runs and start time all the details and also see the reports and summary then here we have dedicated IPs and 
private locations then you can see a section for plugins here so we have all these different plugins bamboo github actions gitlab jenkins team city ci script grafana just in case you want to use any of these plugins then we have a link for documentation here so this will take you to the documentation of gatling and then we have about which will show you the version of gatling enterprise all right and then you can also see a help center where you can see documentation getting started support all this is here okay so now let us go to so here i assume you have already created an organization now let us go to the simulations section here and here we have options create simulation so i will go here and here we have two options i don't have a simulation script so we can create a script without coding and here we have a option i have a simulation script so this is generally when we uh, package our project and add a jar but for now let us see this option so i will click here create a simulation without coding and here we get the option to give our request and all the details you can also see the code here the script here gatling script and as we will add our details here it will be reflected in the script and we have java scala kotlin okay so now i believe you can also read and understand this script because we have been doing this script and using this script so let us say uh, let us do a test on our computer database website itself the demo website so uh, let me say i will go to just go to the computer database website and i will give the website url here and you can see as i am giving it here it is getting reflected in the script here so this is the base url and this it has created the first get request in the scenario here okay if you want you can add more here let us say i also want to go to the this particular computer's page so you can keep on adding add new request so again you can see it has added this new request here okay now if you want to set up pauses between the request you can set the pauses here so for now i'll just say 2 seconds it is also added here then we will set up our user load or injection profile so we have capacity test stress test and soak test so you can select any one and then accordingly give the stats here so if you want to run for how many seconds let us say for this i will say 10 initial user arrival rate 3 final user user arrival you can set whatever you want and all this can be seen here so it says inject ramp users per second 3 to 12 during 10 seconds okay now in case you want to add any assertions we can add this so it is saying let us say global 95 percentile on response time should be lower than this and all this if you want you can add it like this then you can also set your traffic location from where your traffic will come from where the virtual users will come so all this you can set here then who will use your simulation uh, you can give a simulation name this is my demo simulation one and you can select the team as of now i have only one team which is default team now you have the option to save or save and launch for now i will just save so this will go in my simulations you can see it has come here in the simulations so as of now we have not yet started it we have the button to start the simulation from here so i can start the simulation and i will say confirm so this will start you can also see the summary here it is in the building stage as of now so it is building 
and here you can also see all this information run history is here and I can go and as of now it is there and I can see the summary here so here are the logs then you will also see reports and summary once this is done so it is saying initiating the stats aggregator this may take approximately one minute so it is setting up the machines and at this location and then it will it is deploying the load generators here and then it will start the test so all load generators have received their run configuration and now it will start and you can see this is now we can see the reports and here is the summary so you will see the summary here the report here the logs here in the report we can see all the details here you can say set last 5 minutes 15 minutes and so on and then you can also set the section that you want to check and accordingly all these graphs will change and you can see all the options are here response time percentiles response time per second status response time distribution is here errors per second then we have groups here users here arrival rate termination rate concurrent user rate then all the connections are here if you're using any dns it will come here the load generators you can see here it is set in dublin europe and all this information you will get in detail okay here are the su summary and then you can see the actions you can print to pdf you can view the properties or share it with your team you can see the properties here okay so all this is here if i go back to simulations and you can see here if i go to so here you are saying you can see assertions failed so one of the assertion failed and this one has passed and if i see the run history it will show me the run history here and in case you want to if you have multiple run histories multiple runs and you want to compare you can check them and then click on compare runs so let me just go back to the simulation and run it one more time and once this is done I will compare the results so this is running you can see a lot of features are here you can explore the UI of Gatling Enterprise and you can see all the options so this is done you can check the report the summary and now I will go back to the simulations and go here so this is still running you can see it is running now uh, it has not yet completed now it is done and I will go to the run history and now we have got two runs and I will select both of these and say compare runs and now here you can see all the details you can see the comparison here and you can compare whatever you want you can compare the max response times here and whatever you want to compare we can compare it here okay so this is how this will be very handy for comparing the runs and checking if the performance is okay if it has improved or or it has deteriorated all that you can do okay now here in case you want to use your existing scripts existing gatling scripts so for that what you can do is let us say i will go to my gatling standalone folder here and here i will go to the bin folder and i have got my gatling.bat here i will go to this location on the command line So this is on my D drive I will first change the drive to D 
then say CD to change drive and change directory and give the location of the bin folder of Gatling and now I will run gatling.bat file and here here I get an option package and upload the simulation to Gatling Enterprise Cloud or package the simulation for Gatling Enterprise so when you say package and upload here you will also have to use the API token but if you do just want to package it we can use this option which is at number 3 so I will say 3 and hit enter and let us see it will package our simulations for Gatling Enterprise and yes you can see it says package created here in the target folder package.jar I will go to my folder here go to the target folder and you can see package.jar file is created and this I can upload on Gatling Enterprise so let me just go to the Gatling Enterprise uh, let me again go and log in and here I will go to so I can directly go to packages and here I will say create package now when you go to download example here it will give you an option to download Gatling standalone or the Gatling project in any of these build tools and for any of these programming languages as well so which we don't want we already have that we have already created our package.jar so I will click on create and here I will give some name this is I will say my demo package one you can give any name here and I will select the team and browse the file or drag and drop so in my case it is in my D drive Gatling folder target package dot jar and I will say save and you can see it has come here and here we have option to upload edit copy package ID and then delete I will go to the simulations section now and I will say create simulation and here I now I will select I have a simulation script so I will say create I will give a simulation name my demo simulation 2 select a team and now you can select a package all the packages that you have added will be shown here in case you don't have your package you can always create from here but we already have it so I will say this is my demo package one and here now you will see all your simulations will come from that package so all this is coming from my here if I go to my Gatling and user files simulations so all this is all these simulations are now coming here so I can select what I want to run we have recorded simulation 1 2 3 4 and this complete database simulation whatever you want you can select from this list here then we can give the location from where you want to generate the load so you can give the location here number of load gen generator you want to use how much weightage distribution you want to do all that if you want you can do it here we also have option for dedicated IPs then load generator here if you want to uh, you know use any Java system properties or override anything variables you can do it here then we have the time window whatever you want to do ramp up ramp down although it will work as per the setup you have added in your simulation script it will work as per the script that you have added but just in case you want to do some kind of ramp up and ramp down in seconds you can add that and for now I will say save only so it has come here my demo simulation 2 and then I will run it from here so it will start the run and it is building so in the logs we can see it is setting up the load generators 
so it is now deploying the load generators in the following location and then it will start the run so if I go back to simulations you can see it is now injecting the users here and you can see all the logs here and once it is done we can also see the reports and summary as earlier and whenever you want you can also chat with the Gatling team using the chat box here okay so this is successful and now if you want you can check the report so you can see all the summary and the report and all the details are here as we have seen earlier so you can now see this is how you can work with Gatling Enterprise it will be very handy to work with teams and to do all the collaborations to see all the metrics reports and keep a history do comparison of runs and all this you can do with Gatling Enterprise so as I said it is an extra feature extra thing that you can have but otherwise it is not mandatory you can still create your entire performance test with the open source version okay so with that we are coming to the end of our lectures and this is very very important as you transition in the role of performance test engineer as you start doing performance testing for your project you will have a lot of responsibility you will have a lot of power as well because you can now create these performance test tests you can create a lot of virtual users loads and then you know you can test any application for performance and load and stress and capacity but with that you also have a lot of responsibility so always do ethical performance testing and when we say ethical that means always do performance testing when you are authorized to do and on the applications that you are authorized to do performance testing on never do performance testing on your primary systems devices or accounts so whenever you have to do real world performance testing with millions of users thousands lakhs millions of users always use a test device or system do not do it from your own laptop desktop or your own devices also when you have to do performance testing do it on the test applications or the applications you are authorized to work on so this is very very important you do not want to compromise or lock your devices or uh, the applications or the accounts so do not try doing performance testing on your Facebook accounts or anybody's accounts always have test accounts and that too only when you have permissions and authorization to use them okay so always separate uh, use separate test systems and accounts and then also if possible create separate QA or test environment for doing performance testing so it is important for uh, making sure that you don't do uh, you don't lose anything you don't lose any data any uh, important data you don't lock anything and also for getting consistent performance testing res results so that when you use a separate environment which is only reserved for performance testing it is not used for any other activities you can be sure that you are always using the same resources same bandwidth same configuration and you can get some realistic performance test results and you can get some consistent results that you can compare okay so that is why we say always test with the same infrastructure configuration and network and you can take help from your IT team networks team and they will set up the environment for you then generally when you are asked to do a performance test you will be given the metrics the uh, the performance test setup what all you have to the virtual user load and all those things and you may also be given a baseline against which you have to compare your performance test so for example uh, when you test with this much load this many users and this profile what should be the response time what should be the max minimum stand standard deviation mean time etc so if you get the baseline it is good you can set up your performance test according to that and then you can compare against the baseline in case you do not get a baseline already from your manager from your clients in that case you can create your own baseline so how do you create the baseline we set up our performance test as per the requirement and the project and then we run the test with different user loads 
so we can start with a single user just to check everything is working fine then we increase the load maybe to 10 users then 50 100 uh, 500 thousand 10 thousand and so on and with every run we store the stats we store the results and then next time when you run with the same user load starting with whatever uh, you know you have done the earlier earlier time and again you store your results then you can compare the results against the baseline okay and uh, you can create the format according to what works for you if a csv format is good for you to put all your stats and then do comparison you can use that or whatever is in your project you can add that then create realistic performance test always add some pauses and think time or breathing time between requests as the application will be used by real users do not just give a very automated script without any breathing time any think time or pauses so that that will not give you realistic results and will also compromise your applications okay and whenever you are asked to do performance test always take written permission so that you don't find yourself in a, uh, a situation where you know something goes wrong and then uh, you will be blamed for something so always you should have proper permissions you should have authorizations you do ethical performance testing use test devices test systems use test accounts and use the accounts that you are authorized to do performance testing on and always document your results so with this you can become a really really good performance test engineer whenever you have any questions you can always let me know i have some references section so we have done all this uh, we have done all this and uh, then we have references so here are some links that you can check this is the official documentation of gatling then we have the gatling community link here the gatling faq pages here and then all the stack overflow questions that you can find for gatling you can check from here i have some charts and some tables here this is for protocol setup and here you can see the different strategies the explanation of what this means along with the example code so just doing for http protocol configuration we can do this if you also have to add the headers we can add this if you have to set user agents you can see the code here so all this is here then request setup so different strategies if you have to perform a simple http get request this is the code for that for this for a post request we have already seen this in our api testing as well so all this is here we can see the feeders here with circular strategy here is a request where we are validating the response so this checks also we have seen then for scenario setup to perform a simple http get request to simulate a user login you can check all these codes here including custom headers defining a feeder we have already seen this to execute a request sequ sequentially we do it like this dot exec request one then pause for two seconds then exec request two okay introducing pauses and random delays also see here when i say dot pause and give these two values i think this we did not do it let me show you this one so in any script if i say if i go and say here in the pauses if i say pause four and eight that means it will have random pauses between four and eight seconds okay so in case you want to add random pauses you can do it like this okay we have feeders here executing a request conditionally so just in case you want to add some conditions we can do it like this repeating a request okay custom functions are here so you can also add custom functions like this okay then we have different types of checks we have seen some checks this is for checking the status code this is to check the existence of a specific header then validating the value so all this you can check here then feeders i have uh, some snippets here some scripts for different feeder strategies that we can use so this also will be very handy correlation we have seen in this session and the different strategies we can use for correlation extracting dynamic values storing extracted values using these values in subsequent request chaining and you can see here is a very simple gatling simulation so as i have told you in the lectures that in a gatling script the only required section or function is the setup 
and then in the setup we can we refer the scenario and then also the uh, protocol so in case we want we can add all that in the setup part directly and just for keeping our code modular and readable we create different sections as we have seen so this is you can see a very very simple gatling simulation class where we ha just have a setup method this is the scenario name this is the request and this is the this is how we inject okay and then if you want to run your gatling code programmatically until now we either use the gatling engine or the gatling.bat file but if you want to directly run it you can add your class in the gatling engine class directly like this also okay i have added you know some uh, scala basics step this i did for myself but just in case you want you can also check this how can you create a simple class and object with scala and you know print hello world so this will be very handy if you want to check you can check this okay so this was the complete master class of gatling i hope this was very very useful for you whenever you have any questions you can let me know and i hope this will help you a lot and you will become a very good performance test engineer thank you for watching and never stop learning